Washington is not going to risk NATO unraveling by Greece's departure. Because if Greece goes out and comes out of this, the Italians are going to say, why are we in it? Why are we staying in the Spanish and the Portuguese? And so the thing spreads, and then you find out that all of Southern Europe is now part of the Russian Eurasian economic. <laughs> and then Washington yeah. will not accept it. We will simply not accept it. And, then, and if Washington gives an order to Germany and to the EU, they're going to obey it. They don't have any choice whatsoever. And I suppose if Russia did actually succeed in giving some support to any of these countries, that would be seen as an act of aggression in its own right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's be uh, risky for the Russians. And it may be the reason they haven't acted. You know, it's actually in the interest of Russia and China to go to these countries and say, look, we'll pay you to leave. We'll support you because it's cheaper than the military buildup that the Americans are forcing on us. It's cheaper for us to pay your bills. How much do you need? Just tell us and, and you leave. But you see, if they... If they were to do that, Washington would probably be some preemptive nuclear attack. But you see, it would be a direct threat to the empire in the way that we have threatened Russia by trying to take over Ukraine. Mm. Just as Russia can't accept Ukraine being a NATO member, the United States can't accept the Greeks or any part of Europe being in the Russian bloc. Yeah. So I can read the headlines already. Uh, Putin yeah. is, is resurrecting the Soviet Union in a military sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's probably too risky. I mean, Putin, is a, he likes to be non-provocative, and this would be a very provocative thing. Mm. In one of your pieces, one of your latest pieces, you say that this whole Greek drama is instructive, actually, for Russia and Iran in that it shows that they basically can't trust the West. Could you uh, flesh that out a bit more for us? Well, you see, uh, the Greeks found out that there's no goodwill toward them. They are part of the EU. They're part of the West. They're the birthplace of democracy. They're all of this. You know. And what did the Greeks found out? There's absolutely no goodwill whatsoever against them. And they are being looted by their compatriots. So then how can Russia expect any goodwill or Iran expect any goodwill? They can't. And there's not any goodwill toward them. So what does this mean? Well, it means Putin's diplomacy uh, is a dead end. It can't go anywhere because without goodwill, there can't be diplomacy. And yet Putin has bet everything on diplomacy. He's accepted provocation after provocation. He's accepted deteriorating conditions from his standpoint in Ukraine. Uh, the Americans are there now. They're training troops. They are supplying troops. The breakaway republics have been complying with the Minsk agreement, but the Ukrainian government hasn't. So the whole military position is weaker from the Russian standpoint than it was. Uh, the crisis is continuing. I mean, the Russians could have ended this crisis early on simply by reabsorbing the two breakaway republics who did the same thing the Crimeans did. They voted to rejoin Russia, and Putin turned them down. He thought it was too provocative. He was going to rely on diplomacy. Well, all of these things are going to come back to halt Russia because there's no sign that Washington is telling the Ukrainians to comply with the agreement. There's every sign Washington intends the agreement not be complied with. So that means diplomacy will not work for the Russians. It's not going to work for the Iranians. The Iranians may think, oh, now we can be part of the West again. The United States can put sanctions back on them any time it wants to. All it has to do is make some charge. You know, the attack on Iran never had anything whatsoever to do with a nuclear weapons program. This was a cover, just like the Greek debt is a cover for the real agenda. In Iran, the nuclear weapons is a cover for the real agenda, which is the United States simply does not accept countries with independent foreign policies. My understanding is that there is actually no evidence to suggest that Iran is producing you know, this enriched uranium for weaponized purposes. Well, look, the, the National Intelligence Report 
which came out in the United States three or four years ago, signed off by all 16 intelligence agencies, said that Iran had had no interest in a nuclear weapon for at least a decade, mm. and that all efforts in that direction had stopped 10 years ago. The inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency have, are on the ground in Iran. They have always reported that they find no diversion of enriched uranium from the nuclear energy program. Under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, of which Iran is a signatory, they have the right to nuclear energy. And yet, by insisting on its treaty rights, Washington has been able to demonize them for doing what's perfectly legal. And this was a cover. And what all of this pressure and sanctions was the purpose of it is to force Iran to go along with Washington and Washington's policies, which Iran wouldn't do. Indeed, they can't really do it. I mean, it's supposed to be a, rel a revolutionary government. Remember, we overthrew their democratic government. We stuck in the, in the shawl. Uh, we ruled them through this puppet for a number of years. Then they had this revolution, and they, they're back. And, and we're trying to say, well, look, you got to do what we say, whether or not the shawl's there or not. And they're not willing to do that. But that's what the real issue is. The nuclear weapon thing was no more real than Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction or Assad's use of chemical weapons or whatever the lies they were telling about Gaddafi. All of these is cover for getting rid of regimes that had independent policies. Yeah. So you, would you say then that this nuclear deal has actually brought Iran into Washington's orbit in a significant way? Well, I don't know. I don't know how aware they are. I mean, what's so stunning is how even Washington's victims, even its targets, end up accepting Washington's definition of the problem. So what does Iran think the problem has been? Well, it's been this suspicion that they're going to make a weapon. And they probably think that's what the problem was. Oh, the Americans, for some reason, don't believe us. They think we're making a weapon. They insist we have to give up our nuclear energy program so that we can't divert to make a weapon. But we're not making a weapon. We, we just have to convince them. And we have to keep negotiating. We'll work out an agreement. Something one day they'll see we're not actually making a weapon. That was probably in the Iranians' head the whole time. They probably never said... They know good and well we're not making a weapon. This has nothing to do with weapons. This is doing with knuckling us under. If they don't know that, then, yeah, they're now more vulnerable than ever. And I saw just the other day where, where some alleged expert in the Council of Foreign Relations was giving advice to Iran. Now that this $100 billion of their money that we stole and froze has to be returned. The expert is saying, oh, be sure you invest that in the United States and Europe. But if they do that, then that could just be frozen again, couldn't it? Exactly. Uh, will. Exactly. And, of course, if Iran doesn't comply in some significant way with some important U.S. policy, then charges will come back. There may be new charges. They may blame Iran for terrorism. There may be a false flag attack, or they may claim that they're making weapons, or they may get the International Atomic Energy Agency to say, oh, there may have been some diversion. See, they've pressured the International Atomic Energy Agency on a number of occasions. I say they, Washington has pressured this agency on a number of occasions to give uh, less than perfectly clear reports so that they would have some doubt expressed that Washington could exploit against Iran. You know, once or twice, they just about got that. And they can get it. They can put enough pressure. So, yeah, you could end up having a report where they say, well, we don't really know. They might have diverted some. And then that's all Washington needs. So it's far from over. Iran is either going to have to capitulate and conform to Washington's policies in that region, or the pressure will continue. Or else the neoconservatives who control American foreign and military policies have to lose influence and be moved aside. One of those three things is going to happen. Iran surrenders, or the neocons lose their influence, or this thing is far from over.